This section is about legal issues. This section will give you a sense of the federal and state laws you need to know about in order to avoid issues with the law. First of all, let's talk about the federally protected categories having to do with discrimination law. The law that was sort of started the civil rights movement in the 1960s was called Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This law initially protected people in various groups such as race, sex, color, religion, national origin, ethnicity, and ancestry. After that point in time, several other laws were passed that created um, similar protected categories such as a law protecting um, discrimination based on age. That law is called the Age Discrimination and Employment Act and it protects people who are over the age of 40. An additional law was passed protecting women who are pregnant or have related medical conditions such as inability to become pregnant, fertility issues, or pregnancy itself. That law brought us to the 1990s and in the 1990s, a big law was passed called the Americans with Disabilities Act, protecting people with physical or mental disabilities and ensuring that the workplace was open to people with disabilities. The Immigration Reform and Control Act requires us to verify eligibility and authorization to work, but it also prohibits discrimination on the basis of citizenship status. Union membership um, is protected based on the National Labor Relations Act and military status is also a protected category based on the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act. Also, genetic information is protected by the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. Additionally, employees who have received benefits such as FMLA or have filed an EEO claim against an employer are also entitled to legal protections. In addition to the federal protections, many states take the liberty of creating additional sets of protected categories. So many states' laws mirror the federal laws but add additional protected categories, such as marital status, family situation, medical condition, and the like. So check with your state to ensure that you understand what topics are prohibited from discussing in an interview. Those resources can be found in the free resources tab on the Bullseye website. This graphic demonstrates that we want to make sure that our questions are consistent and job related. The minute we're inconsistent about any step along the way of our hiring process, the case could be made that that's unfair and potentially unlawful. And so in order to stay in the green area, we want to make sure that we are fair and consistent in all of our actions and decisions. Now one of the special considerations you need to be aware of is with the Americans with Disabilities Act and a couple of points to highlight. First of all, the employer may not ask disability related questions or conduct medical examinations until after they have made a conditional job offer to an applicant. Remember that employers have an obligation to make reasonable accommodations to enable applicants with disabilities to participate in the interview process and employers cannot ask whether an applicant has a physical or mental impairment, has received workers' comp benefits, or was ever addicted to illegal drugs. If it's a known disability, for example, an employee comes in in a wheelchair or they note it to you, you can ask how we can accommodate the disability, but you cannot ask about how they became disabled or what the prognosis or diagnosis of the disability is. Sometimes, inadvertently, a subject will come up in the scope of an interview that should not have. An applicant may offer information about a leave of absence, about their spouse or children, or any other subject on the list of prohibited inquiries. For example, they may bring up FMLA if they want to explain the reason for a gap in employment, or they may inadvertently bring up issues regarding their children. If any of these topics come up, don't get nervous or rattled firmly and confidently say the following sample verbiage. Uh, that information will not be used to determine whether you are selected. If selected, you can work with HR on an appropriate accommodation. Or childcare or your pregnancy plans will not be used to determine our hiring decisions. This way, you verify to the applicant that, that you know this is a prohibited inquiry and that information will not be used against them. 
Just because they may bring an issue up, that does not give you the right to ask about it. So be cautious if one of these topics comes up in the scope of your interview. To avoid legal trouble, treat applicants respectfully. Be consistent. Get your list of questions and stick to that list of questions. Follow through on all of your hiring practices and procedures. And don't make decisions until all candidates have been evaluated and tested in a systematic manner. By following through on your reference checking and background checks, we'll ensure that your hiring practice is fair, consistent, and won't get you into legal hot water.